I mentioned behavioral plasticity. And I also suggested that um, I think that um, we have, uh, that we can learn an infinite number of behaviors, that we have infinite behavioral plasticity. Now that's probably not entirely true. There's probably some plateau or cap, but I'm not sure it's been reached. So with that in mind, we have to consider, um, we have to consider child development. Now the traditional view of child development um, by most developmental psychologists is that it's largely an unfolding process. Um, and a lot of child development is attributed to maturational processes. Um, the environment is usually given fairly short shrift. It's sort of given a secondary role in which this, un this genetic plan sort of unfolds. And that's where you get the concept of stages, for example. Parents talk about and developmental psychologists talk about stages through which children progress. But of course, there's a lot of variability and not all children progress through stages and they don't do it at the same time. So with the notion of behavioral um, flexibility or behavioral plasticity in mind, my view and the behavior analytic view is that children are almost um, infinitely malleable. Um, if you look at a newborn and you compare the behavior of a newborn to the behavior of a two-year-old or a four-year-old or an eight-year-old, what you see is an incredibly increasingly complex set of behaviors. And then the question arises, where do they come from? Um, now, it's clearly the case that in order for a child to interact with the environment, it must have the, the, the muscular system and the neuroanatomical system to do so. And those things generally do develop as a function of a maturational plan to a certain degree. But a newborn lying in its crib doesn't have the means with which to interact with its environment very much. It can't even see clearly, it can't reach and grasp, it can't sit up, it can't roll over, it can't turn its head you know, intentionally. Um, but as it develops and matures you know, uh, muscularly and neuroanatomically, it begins to interact more complexly with its environment. And so when you see children's behavior becoming more complex, it's mostly a function of the children interacting with a more complex environment. Um, and of course, that complexity uh, increases when children begin to talk, and it increases even more when children uh, begin to go to school. So I, so I would argue that, that that it, it's, it's more parsimonious to view child development as an increasingly set of complex interactions between a child's behavior um, and the child's environment, with the causal um, uh, impact being uh, more um, in the environment than the, than the child's genes.